It was going guys coming in the year, so let's get started with our Tetris development. So here I have a single file called part1.html. So every video would be uh, would be having a separate source file with a source code uh, that regards to the particular part, so so that it would be easier for you to see how the code grows, basically. So what's the first thing to consider? What goes next? So. Uh, the the order of development uh, also kind of matters here because when I was initially doing this I messed up things a little bit so hopefully it would be much easier for you here and we're gonna be running this in the browser so here I just run this part one HTML so here we go and I would uh, open the developer tool so control shift I go into the console tab here we're gonna be printing some debugging information in regards to our Tetris board, let's call it like that. So in this video we're gonna define the, uh, the very basic data structures that are needed for our Tetris and yeah uh, already we can go for a very useful Wikipedia article that I've been using in order to uh, get the Tetromino shapes, so Tetrominoes are the Tetris pieces for those who's not aware of that. So here, here are the shapes. Okay, um, so it's up to seven, up to seven. And in regards to the board size, uh, there are different implementations. I've been sticking to 10 by 20 plus two, uh, two, two walls and one, one floor on bottom, two, ball, two walls on the sides and one floor on the bottom so hopefully that's hopefully that makes sense now um our entire game would live in a single script tag so let's start by defining this script tag and the only thing that we need to define a part of this is let's create a div and give it an id um let's let's call it tetris why not so this is this div would contain the entire dynamically generated uh, graphics for our game. So I can actually uh, so here just mention this explicitly. So here, here we're gonna have game graphics uh, element. All right, and here uh, here uh, we have this Tetris. Uh, right, so hopefully it makes sense and the very first thing to consider uh, I want to create a Tetris board so Tetris board uh, is gonna be a variable uh, let's let's call it Tetris we can call it uh, we can call it board doesn't matter really so here um, I'm going to pre-initialize this so it's gonna be array where every single uh, every element is gonna be uh, ASCII character. So hopefully that makes sense. So we'll start, we need, uh, so empty, uh, empty space, like a single white space would represent an empty space uh, within our Tetris. Uh, hash symbol would represent the wall and add symbol would later be used to represent the tetrominoes, also known as Tetris pieces. So we need 10, of empty square uh, empty spaces so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten then we need uh two walls on the sides like this and we need one um so grab this one one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and the last but not least is going to be this bottom that looks like this now <coughs> for the simplicity of later coding uh, we want to define a couple of constants so here we have the game constants in general so there there, there would be a few uh, i would be adding those constants by the time they would get involved within the within the game itself. So game constants, and let's start with the constant width. Uh, uh, so let, let, we can even call it Tetris width. So it's going to be equal to twelve because we have ten plus two. 
and const tetris height is gonna be equal to 21 because we have uh, we have 20 elements here plus one down below all right so I hope that makes sense um, and also for the tetrominoes uh, for the tetromino patterns const let's call it tetromino tetromino size and it's gonna be equal to four because tetromino we're gonna be using we're gonna be relying on four by four elements to represent this this kind of pieces all right so let's go for that as well so here I have tetrominoes uh, aka tetris pieces so let's call it tetrominoes um, and it's gonna be the array and every element is gonna be uh, what consists from the strengths uh, four by four and just uh, uh, yeah uh, slightly not like this so one two three four plus um, yeah like this two three four and so uh, this is the the single element I, I couldn't make it uh, a single line but I'm using this pluses here to uh, make it visually more self-explanatory like uh, what the shape of the tetromino is all about so instead of just making a straight plane line uh, instead I'm doing this uh, kind of pseudo two-dimensional thing well uh, for for a game logic for all the calculation of the indices we're going to be relying on one dimensional uh, indexing uh, it's just it's better in <laughs> it's just better for in, from many perspectives and I, I just like I just like that which is probably the most important reason so <coughs> we need seven tetrominoes I'm gonna be filling them up so one two three four five six seven uh, and another kind of interesting consideration that I came up with uh, during the development so first we'll put those that either do not rotate at all like uh, this square square guy or uh, like only the those that can only have two positions during rotation because uh, since 4x4 four four, uh, matrix for represented as a tetromino is not really symmetrical uh, it means that uh, the axis that the tetromino is going to be rotating around is not going is not going to be always uh, symmetric. Uh, it's even better in my in my personal opinion. It's even better for pieces like this one and like this one, like this one, for instance. Uh, but uh, if we do rotate all the four uh, all, all all the four angles for this like pieces and this and this one, those uh, only have two. Uh, two positions two shapes uh, I call them shapes in that case uh, that would be confusing because they would be just like uh, going a little bit uh, uh, behaving a little bit strange so to avoid that uh, we're gonna have those having only two uh, uh, either one or two uh, rotation shapes first and then we'll have this one this one and this one that have three rotation shapes so we'll start uh, so I'm gonna be using the add symbol to define uh, the tetromino uh, shape so here we have this uh, lawn block right uh, we can also well probably yeah uh, let's probably start by uh, by the square block yeah because that doesn't we, the one that doesn't rotate at all then let's go for this one then we go for oh, uh, we go for this one. Uh, <laughs> no, not exactly, not exactly like this. Uh, it's better to make it like so. Um, I don't remember whether I was doing them on top or on the bottom. Probably, probably on top. Uh, it doesn't matter really that much okay so these guys so one two three four uh yes and the rest 
So I have this one, two, three, four, and these are being um, are being rotated to different to different sides. So if I if I messed up uh, something, uh, I'll definitely clear like clear that. Um, not not a hundred percent sure how exactly I've been positioning this one but uh when it comes to collision detection uh uh move, move, moving this to drumming around and rotating uh if i did something wrong with uh with a the definition then we can easily fix it later on so it's, it shouldn't be really a problem okay um now let's actually update the page to make sure it still uh kind of works so no errors so far so good and now um, we're going to define uh, one of the most uh, helpful functions that I've been using during developing this game, uh, a print board function. So uh, before we start, uh, just a few words uh, on the game logic that is going to be very, uh, th this, well, what I'm going to say, uh, what I'm going to be saying now is going to be really important for the future videos. So please pay attention to this. So uh the determinant that didn't yet land uh in within the tetris board is not going to be the part of the tetris board uh by the time it's moving around rotating and detects the collision with uh, with the rest of uh of the stuff like the rest of the stuff i mean the tetris board itself and whatever pieces it's filled with already so um only when the piece lands down or just stuck somewhere in the middle, like on on an, on top of an, on another piece. Only in that case, uh, the tetromino would become the part of the board. Before that, uh, it's not going to be the part of the board. So, uh, printing the board uh, means printing uh, this empty kind of board array plus whatever tetrominoes that has landed already. So. During the game, when it comes to implementing the logic of dropping down or settle, settling down the tetrominoes within the Tetris uh, board, that's going to be incredibly uh, incredibly helpful. But for now, uh, we just need a function that would draw this array uh, into the console. Uh, because, yeah, this this is just really, really helpful thing to, to consider. It might be treated as a little bit of a waste of time, but... I personally, I insist on doing this, so let's go for it. So, print Tetris board to console. And function, let's call it print board, right? So, the very first thing to consider here, I want to define the uh, Tetris board string. So, Tetris board string. So let's call it Tetris string and this is going to be equal to empty string for now. Then we want to loop over board rows and I can say for let row equals to zero, row is less than uh, Tetris height I guess, that's the name, Tetris height is less than the Tetris height, then row plus plus. And the same for column, for columns. So here, let the column, column. So, and here Tetris width, All right? Here, I want to loop over board columns. Now, the next thing to consider is to uh, convert uh, row and column, column coordinates into a square index. And this, uh, this is very essential. We're gonna be using this like formula a lot in this series. So here, um, one, of the, one of the simplest ones. So we can say let square equals to row multiplied by the Tetris width. So you can, you can check this formula out uh, if you have some free time and if you're interested. But 
uh, you can just take it as is, just as a formula to convert this row and column coordinates to the actual index, like this is index 0, index 1, 2, and set, et cetera, et cetera. So whatever, uh, whatever uh, element has its own index. And this is going to be used later on for uh, given in IDs for table cells in the, uh, when it comes to the graphics as well. So this, this square extraction is quite important. So row multiplied by Tetris with, uh, uh, multiplied by Tetris with plus the column. All right. Now um, uh, we want to populate Tetris board string. And I can simply say Tetris string plus equals and empty space just for, for to be visually pleasing plus and whatever we have uh so we call this tetris yes so tetris um let's probably call it tetris board or yes just, let's just keep it as is tetris indexed by the square all right that's it and also uh, we want to append new line to Tetris board string. So this is specific to JavaScript uh, and to this console lock function that we're relying. Since we can do print the line without a uh, new line into the console, we just formulate the, the string first and then we'll uh, print this, the entire string. So here, um, uh, Tetris string plus equals in the new line character that's it and finally we want to print tetris to console and i just say console print tetris to console console.log and tetris string and let's call the function so print board and let's have a look at the output, All right? Okay, so why is this so long? Okay. All right, so here is a little typo. Um, yeah, obviously we want to say column plus plus here. Um, so hopefully, uh, here we go again, and yeah, fantastic. So now we have, you see like now we do have our Tetris board being printed, which is exactly what we wanted to have. All right, so um, I think we'll end up, in, uh, we'll end up here for this video, so because I just don't really want to have, uh, don't really want this, want this one to last forever. And in the next video, we'll, we'll write a function to bring the graphics for, for this board. Because uh, in order to display the tetromino, we need uh, that rendering already. And when it comes to rotation and other game-specific things, uh, we're going to be switching between like print board or rendering the board, depending on what exactly we're supposed to be debugging there. Well, actually, rendering the board should also gonna work but again like, uh, if we're doing this from scratch if you're not sure like how this is gonna be working then this print board function is really essential but yes you you can drop this uh, if you don't want to if you want to because it doesn't do anything but prints the debugging information so this is from my site see you in the next video until that time and take care